Good morning as we go to the chitas of today. Today is Monday. Oh, today, today is today is Tuesday. Oh, today is even. Today is Tuesday, which is the third reading of the portion of Kedoshim. So the title that we are holding on chapter 19, verse number 23. So it says, when you're going to come to the land, and you're going to plant a fruit tree, and you shall surely block its fruit from you. How many years? Surely shun him for three years. You're not allowed to eat its fruit. It shall be for you. It shall be for you to be blocked off from use. Lo ye achel, it should not be eaten. So that says, what's the word adelim? Adelim, it comes from the word atulim means, and you shall block it off, a blockage. Timus. It shall be blocked and closed from deriving benefit from it. An auto, like an auto comes to the word, uh, a child who doesn't have a circumcision, is a closed, it's closed up, it's covered. Shali shani yilachem adelim. From when does one start counting the three-year period for the time of its planting? That's one uh, what it says. One might think that one stores away the fruit for three years. No. After three years, you elapse. The fruit becomes permissible. No, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to put the fruit away. It has to just rot, you know, to fall off the tree, and that's it. The difficult ship, Taylor says, it shall not, it, it, it shall be, the fruit shall remain in its forbidden status forever. So that for the first three years, the Taylor calls it Arla. It is forbidden any kind of fruit tree that you plant. Even here in America, any fruit tree you plant, you're not allowed to eat it for the first three years. And then, Ubashana Haraviz. And the fourth year, on the fourth year also, all the fruit become holy, uh, a praise to the Lord. What does that mean? This is just like the, the second tithing you brought up to Yerushalayim, concerning which says, it's written that every tithe in the land is holy to the Lord. Just as so the tithe may not be eaten outside the walls of Yerushalayim, except after having been redeemed. So this it has to be redeemed. And this thing is a praise to God, for it carries it there to Yerushalayim, to law to be given to, to, to the fourth year to bring your fruits to Yerushalayim. Either you brought the fruit itself, or you transferred it into something else. Verse 25, and on the fifth year. So now you have to wait really for the tree's fruit until the fifth year. Teichlu, as period. You're allowed to eat its fruit, which it comes to add to your own, uh, you're increasing your own produce. I am God, your God. So now she says this commandment, which will you, you, you will observe, will be in order to increase in the produce for you. Because as, it, as a reward, I will bless you for the fruits of your, of your planting. I mean, Kiva used to say, the Torah states this to encounter man's evil inclination so that a person should not say, for four years I'll suffer with this tree for nothing. That's, are you kidding me? So I won't become a farmer. I won't plant any trees. Scripture there for the Torah tells us, no, don't worry. If you're going to do this mitzvah and you're not going to have any kind of pleasure for the first four years of this tree, I'm going to make sure that on the fifth and on, you're going to have an unbelievable abundance of produce. Ani Hashem, and as the Torah always says, and Zov, but Ani Hashem, Ani Hashem, I'm maftiach lochokach, I promise you, b'neman, and you can trust me to be faithful to watch my promise. Verse 26. Lei seich adam, you're not allowed to eat over the blood. Lei senachashu, and you're not allowed to act on the basis of omens, velisa inanu, and or lucky hours. So Rashi says this verse is expounded in many different ways. This is a very open-ended verse, 
And the Gemara Sanhedrin, you can go follow as it means, as a warning that one should not eat the flesh of the holy sacrifice before dashing the blood. Number two, it's a warning against anyone to eat from an ordinary animal before its soul is fully departed. And many more ways to verse is expounded. So this Leiseichel al-Adam has many, many interpretations. This actually also was the, uh, the Ashkenazim uh, uh, reason why they don't eat in a base oven. Leiseichel al-Adam. You shouldn't eat while a person is mourning his own loss of his soul, of his family. So Leiseichel, this is also one of the traditions that, that comes in this verse that we don't eat, that only the people that are avelim, our mourners, eat in the house of the other. Again, so that's why it's a minag, it's based on a minag, and therefore some people, Svajim actually make a big meal, or many Jews do. Listen, nachashu, like those interpret the sound of the action of a weasel or a bird as omens for good or bad. So if you will, you know, you pass a black cat, or you vey. It's going to be a bad day. Or like an interpret bread falling from his mouth or a deer crossing his path. Or signs of such kind of thing. A Jew doesn't say, oh, I saw this thing today. It's going to be a bad day. Or I saw that thing today. It's going to be a good day. Lucky hours also. Expression of Sa'inu denotes an enos that goes in the hours. One would say, such and such a day is auspicious begin, to begin work. With such and such an hour is unlucky to embark on a journey. All these things, the Yidden, a Jew is above time and space, and therefore he doesn't, he's not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to ground the corners of your head. You have to let the corners of your head go. You're not allowed to destroy the edges of your beard. Now she says, this refers to someone who cuts his hair in such a way that he makes, he makes the hair on his temple, even from behind his hair to his forehead. So he cuts the corners of his head. He does not pay as we call Thereby causing the hairline surrounding his head to become a circle since the main hairline behind his ears is such higher than that on the hair of his temple. So therefore, a person makes like a circle around his head. That's called the concept of rounding and not you have to keep, your, you have to bring down the, your, 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 your hair to come down towards your a man, towards his beard. What does that mean? Meaning the end of his beard and its borders. And there are five. There are five corners of the face that's talking to a man. Oh, um, uh, two on the cheek and on the top, the edge of the cheek, near the head, where the cheek and the, the, and the, and is broad and has two corners, the extremities, the extremities, one near the temple and the other, the end of the cheekbone towards the center of his face and one below on the chin at the point where the two cheek join together. So we have three places and exactly, I don't know exactly the place, therefore we don't touch our beard. And over here, to tell you, this, uh, there'll be another Ashi that'll explain this, because over here it says, Le shashris, you're not allowed to destroy. So that's why you're not allowed to shave. That's why even though men do cut their beards, but to use a razor, that's tashchis, so that's destruction. So you should never use a razor on your face. Electric razor, most rabbis uh, say that you could use, but, but, a, but, a, but a, a, a razor, nobody, no, nobody ever should ever use a razor on his face because that's considered in the tater destro destroying one's beard. And we're going to have another Rashi on this. Verse 28, and you shall not make cuts of your, uh, on your flesh for a person who died. He used to be accustomed, he used to hurt himself when somebody would die. This is even till today, there's people that lacerate themselves. 
for the uh, for the for, for sadness if that somebody dies. Save his kaka, and you're not allowed to make a tattoo. You're not a Jew is not allowed to put a tattoo on his on his, on his body. Ani Hashem, I am God. So now she, this was the the practice of the Amorites to make cuts on the flesh when a person related to them would die. Save his kaka. So I said this in the scripture etched, mechukok, and sunken. It's not talking about writing on your hand. This is talking about something that you implant in your hand and never to be erased because you put it in a situation that it can't be erased. For one etched it in a needle and it remains permanently black. I mean, it permanently changes its color. And the Torah prohibits a person from tattooing himself. Kaka, and I a similar expression found in the verse, and huka, hang them, and sink them, and hang them. So that's just going the word kaka. So kaka, now she says they would thrust a pole into the ground and hang the guilty person on it. This way, one hangs would appear as if he's inserted, thrusted into the ground. So kaka is something that's implanted. Verse 29. You shall not defile your daughter to make her a harlot. And you should not least your land fall into, into, into znus. And the, and the land will be filled with a rat. So now she says, this is speaking of a person who hands over his unmarried daughter to have a relationship that is not for the purpose of marriage. Used to use that children, sex trafficking. Least the land fall in hardly, but it's for, for if you do so, the land itself will cause its fruits to be to be astray, producing them elsewhere and not in the land. And thus the verse says, defiles the land with your hearts. Therefore, the rains were with them. So therefore, have a moral clan, people. We struggle with this until today. Verse number 30. As for Shaytay Tishmeru, you shall observe my Shabbos, Mukdashay Tiro, and you shall revere my sanctuary, Ani Hashem. Now she says, this means one may not enter the temple with his walking staff, his shoes, and his money belt, or with the dust on his feet. And although I warned you regarding this, of the wholeness of the sanctuary, says God, nevertheless, you shall observe my Shabbos. The construction of the sanctuary does not precede the laws of Shabbos. Verse 31. Do not turn to the sorcery of Oiv and Yudaini. Shall not seek these and thereby defy yourself through them. I am God. I am God. As she says, Al Tifna El of or Yudaini, this is a warning against one who practiced sorcery of Oiv and Yudaini. And what these forms of sorcery? One who practiced sorcery of Oiv is Pitin the sorcerer. He came mute to the, with the dead, as it were, by raising the spirits of the dead. And this is something that has people do today. They go and they think that they can communicate with the dead, which then speaks from his armpit. And one who practices the sorcery of Yudaini inserts a bone of a creature called Yudaini and into his mouth, and the bone would speak, so to say. So these people, human being, people will go to these kind of situations. al to to occupy yourself with these types of sorcery. For if when you occupy yourself with them, you'll become defiled before me, and I will deem you abominable. Ani Hashem alekechem. I know who you are exchanging for whom, meaning you would exchange the Lord for one of these sorceries that you can establish your life and what you're going to do, not trust in God, but put yourself in the hands of all these kinds of sorcery and deities. Verse 32. They save a talker. You should stand up, rise yourself for a vulnerable person. But you shall respect the elderly. Elderly. You shall fear God. I am your God. So now she says, one might think that this commandment is talking about dust an old person. 
even though he may not be, he may be guilty of transgressions. Scripture therefore says, Zakin, in turn of a Zakin, exclusively first required wisdom. In general, when the Torah says Zakin, elderly person, it doesn't mean elderly in age. It means elderly in wisdom. Zakin is Zashakana Chachmo. Where the same turn refers to great wise men, and therefore not guilty of transgression. And now the Torah comes and tells us about a die to Pnei Zakin. They save a token. Sorry, so that's why the title of a saver is, is, that, is a person, I'm sorry, saver talking for a vulnerable, vulnerable saver is a person who's knowledgeable person, understand? Uh, die to Pnei Zakim, what means respecting the elderly? Well, I mean, that's, uh, so, so, so die to Pnei Zakim, sorry, so, I'm sorry, go back. A saver talking, Rashi says, means a, you have to show, stand up for a knowledgeable person. That's it. And also a zakin. The, 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 the Rashi puts the two together. Save height. What's an elderly person? Is a person that is a, that is a, that is a zakin. They save a talk of a type of a zakin. Zeshakana chachma. Vadai pin zakin. What is it meant respecting a, a, a knowledgeable elderly person? Uh, one may not sit in this place. Speak and instead when, when the elder turn is to speak or contradict it. Since one's obligated to rise before an elderly, only when the latter enters with one four cubits, one might think that he may close his eyes when the elder approaches. And if he didn't see it, and thus evades the obligation to rise before him. If a scripture says, it says, you shall fear your God. For this matter is privately known to one who is committed. And no one knows about except the person himself. Well, I was sleeping. How do you know that I wasn't sleeping? And concerning any matter that is known in the heart of the person, the Torah says, you shall fear your God, God knows best. And that teaches in general, we should show the concept of respecting our elders and standing up before our elders. And that completes the Chumash of today. We now go to the Tanya of the day. The Alter Rebbe ended off yesterday with the concept of the concept of that there is three levels in, in this aspect of love and fear. There's a level that's like a son to a father, or nafshi ibisicha, as he says, my soul, I thirst God, I have a natural, which is a natural thirst of God. Everybody has an ava mesuteres. There's a love that comes through contemplation. And then there's a love that's a love that comes from delight. And the Alter Rebbe explained that these three loves connect itself to the three worlds. The world of emanation, the world of Atsilas, is the Ava Betanugim, the love of delight. That's where over there it's all about God. It has nothing to do about self, it has nothing to do about midot, it has nothing to do about attributes, it has to do with, with godliness. And that's why at Tzaddik, Loves the Abish not because of any gain or any even spiritual gain, because he just loves God. And then you have Ava that comes to contemplation, which is the level of Bria, the world of creation, which there is the concept of understanding. And there, but it resides within it, the concept of the world of Atsilas, but it's still a lower diagram because it's a world of your own contemplation, your own meditation. And then we come to the world of Ava Misuteris, that means every person has a love of God, a natural love of God, which that is the world of uh, Yitzira, the world of formation, where there, that's where your love is, comes ultimately and brings up your, your, your Torah Mitzvahs to that level of that world. So even though ultimately, what in essence, what the, what, this, what Kabbalah says, that means even though everything that I do, even though I might think I'm doing it for ulterior motives, Ultimately, since I have a true love of God, so therefore, ultimately, everything connected to my essence. So ultimately, everything is brought up to the world of Atzilus. So what do I need to have? Any contemplation. So that's when a person falls in and says, okay, so what do I need contemplation? I, ultimately, if my, my, my love of God, I have a love of God because I have an inner love of God, so that's enough. Leave it like that. I have to go work 
on 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 contemplation. I need to go work to to do meditation. So now the Rebbe says, don't fall into that. Don't live with your instinct. Do not only live that you're a Jew in your essence. That you then you're gonna miss our way to Hashem. We'll all miss the concept of our avoider and our way to bring ourselves to a higher level. And that's what the Alter Rebbe says. Shaf became, nevertheless, Sarich Latoyev Besichel. A person, Nebuch, they gave him the intellect. But he gave him the intellect only to use it for business. Nebuch, they gave him the intellect to use the service of God. Sarich Latoyev Besichel, the Alter Rebbe says, therefore, you must strain his intellect to apprehend and attain also the above mentioned level of Avas. And we have to do that. We need to go higher. We just cannot live with our instinct, with our instinct, our essence, the love that we each have within the essence of our being. We cannot live with them. We need to do Avaita. We need to work on ourselves. We need to think. We need to contemplate. We need to meditate to reach up to Avas Oilam, to the world of the worldly love and the Skelis Lev, which I mentioned above. Haba, which comes. Which comes from the understanding and knowledge of the greatness of God. I need to have the understanding and knowledge of the greatness of God. I need to use my brains. As such, it differs from the love of my soul, unlike my son, which is essentially our inherited and are only revealed through contemplation. In order to fan the blaze and the fury of love with the glowing coals. And an intense fire. And a fire that rises up heavenly. I need to create a love like a fire. I have to break up the fire. I need to make it hot. I need to make myself excited. I need to create a true excitement within me. I need to create a love of God in myself. That nothing can overcome. Because what happens is, I'm only going to live with a love that it's an instinct love. Chas v'shalom. Things can happen to that love. Things can happen to my existence. I won't do Torah mitzvahs. I need to create a fire that no waters could quench it, can extinguish it. When the hardest lays you too, and no rivers can quench it. Well, I mean, love created a result of contemplation is more passionate in theory than love, which is essentially inherited. That's it. Even the inherited love is revealed through, and, 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 when, and even when the inherited love is revealed through contemplation, it's not enough, that love. It's not enough. It's not enough, the love that I reveal from my inherited, my inherited love. I need to create my own love and my own fire. And that's what I need to do. I need to be able through meditation and through contemplation and through understanding God to create more than dust a candle. Maybe that's the, that's the difference between a candle. Every person has a, has a flame, has a spark. A spark of God is not enough. I need to create a fire. And that fire is not created through dust because I have I know that I have a spark of God in me. I know that I, I, I God's my... Father and God's my creator, I need to create a fire. I need, and that takes intellect, and that takes work, and that takes his bondness, that takes contemplation. So it's not dust, oh, I believe. I have to create a belief that's based on Avana. That's also a very important thing. I can have, I can have belief. Everybody's a believer. I have a belief because I know. I have a belief because I don't know. I don't know. So if I believe, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, Belief out of ignorance. No, I have belief out of knowledge. I have belief. I understand what I believe. I I comprehend. So I understand what I what I don't understand, and that's because belief is based on knowledge. But I have an understanding in it, and, and and I create a more deeper understanding. So more I have, the more I understand God, the more I have belief. So my belief in becomes more deeper. And when I, my, my understanding of God becomes more deep and my belief in God, then nothing can, nothing can push me over. 
Yes, Yisrael, you know, my little bechinas ava kedish base. For there's a superiority and excellence of the quality of love burning like a fierce coal, an intense flame. Habam is born and does bedula saint sofer, which comes to the knowledge of the greatness and the transcendency of blessed Eid and Seif. I'll stay bechinas ava neskeres on the even on the two loves, the love of like a father to a son. That's a natural love with the love of, my, of that I, nafshi ibisicha, the love that I know that my soul is God. So it's the love of God. Nafshi is my soul, I thirst you. I thirst God, who's the, my creator, the creator of my soul. And is my soul. Because it's not a burning fire. That's not a burning fire love. That's why it's called Ava Mesuteris. That's why it's called an instant, an instant. instant, instant. It's called a, a love that's in the essence or a hidden love. The merry result of feeling of contemplating God's closeness to God so much as he's the source of life or the true father. The superiority of this love is it's like the superiority of the excellence of gold over silver. But it's very common as I will explain later. But I mean, not only is gold worth more than silver, ounce for ounce, in which case is preponderance of silver would be more, would be more value, but gold is distinctly of greater value and that it possesses a distinct gleam, which is people find highly attractive. So too with regard to the love that results wholly for contemplation. It's not just a higher, higher love. On the contrary, the level of love that comes from the above Term of Ava Rabba, great love is higher form of love. The superiority of love that results entirely from contemplation lies in the very passion and the yearning of the soul. That's the difference. So the Ava Rabba, so in essence, the higher level of love, and the and the and the and the, and the instinct love is a gift is a gift by God. It doesn't come through my service, really, right? The gift, both of them is a gift. Both of them, the tzaddik's love was given to him. The regular Jew's love is given to him. The love of contemplation is what I do by myself. I do through my own awakening, through my own desire, through my own choice. And that's why this love has a much more intense concept. And again, that's why the makrish bal tshuva in the main tzaddikim also that when a Tshuva does Tshuva, he does it out of passion, which a Tzaddik does, might not have. It's one of the reasons why we put a Tzaddik near the Russia. It's put down uh, why we put a Tzaddik near Russia. Because a Tzaddik should learn from the Russia passion. Because a Tzaddik can have such a, a, such a relation with God that's very natural to him. It's very cold. It's cold. And he needs to learn from the Russia what passion means. What is passion? So he learns from the negative guy who has a passion in worldly matters. He learns what it means to have passion to God. And that's this love, this middle love, the greatness of this love that comes through contemplation, which each and every one of us can have, is a love that has passion. Because it comes from my own Yetzirah. It comes from my own animalistic soul. It comes from my own natural soul. It comes from my contemplation. It comes from my free choice. It comes from my desire. And when I do, the Ebishta made in, in naturally, so to say, and when a person accomplished something, he has passion in it. Then something that's given to him, that's why we can abuse a gift, a person gives a gift and we don't care, we, we lose it and we'll break it, but something that we create, we have a passion and we care about it, because it's ours. Right? So the a person wants his own success, even one, one, one kav, one amount of his own success in somebody else's tent. Why? Because that's where you have a passion in it. So to this love, this middle love that comes through my contemplation, which is whatever my contemplation might be, but still it comes through my elevator. There's a, I have a passion in this, in this kind of love to it. And that's the greatness of this is one of the reasons why the two previously mentioned kinds of love that a Jew inherit do not suffice. They lack the passion, which compared to love emanated from entirely from one thing. Alter that, but now provides it another reason. By holy contemplation, love is, is necessary. It is important to attain competitive, contemplative love, not only because of the superiority of the resulting passion, 
because the contemplation is an end to itself. There is a mitzvah, so to say, is an obligation of Avedah By contemplating God's greatness, one fulfills the, holy, the whole purpose of creation. That the creative being should come to know and understand God's greatness. And that's the, that alone is an unbelievable, unbelievable thing. I doubt that ever coins in these, this kind of a way. This is the whole man. And his whole purpose. Why did God create me? Why did God create me as a human being with an intellect? That I should choose. Choose what? The mandas is Kvedoshah. That's really my choice. That's why God created me. The Abishta created me for one person, one purpose. La das Hashem to know God. We occurred to fight in the majestic splendor of His greatness. That's the whole purpose of creation. Forget about my passion. Forget about the connection. I'm going to do look. The Abish that created me with a seichel to have a knowledge of God. That's the everything else that I do with my seichel, with my intellect, is only part of that purpose. That's it. So if you if you want to know what your purpose is in life, the Alter Rebbe says right over here. That's a prezekol adam. My purpose in life is to search for God. That is the purpose of every Jewish man, woman, and child. To use my brain to search out godliness. Each person who born came to tell us, no one glove fits at all. Every one of us needs to search for knowledge of God. That's what, Abish, that's what God gave you, me and you a seichel. That's our free choice. And that's why the Mishnah says in a different way, ain't love ben chayid, there's no free person, but a person who uses lunch time. There's no, everything else is like your, your regular, if you don't use, if I don't use all my brain for the Torah, then basically, just like any animal. He created a cow, created, created a horse, he created it, and he created me. Maybe she created me a person with a seichel. That's my free choice to see God in the world, to be able to see the Abishta in everything that I do. And that is comes through das. That comes through knowledge. That's why it says, <laughs> make sure when you teach a child, teach him Torah. That Yam Kiyask and Yosem because then once you put a foundation that everything that he sees, has to be seen through the Torah uh, uh, eye glasses. He has to be seen through the wisdom of God. Now everything he does, whatever he's going to be, doctor, lawyer, rabbi, he will see a godly purpose. And that's why he's on the world for. He's on the world for to be able to bring godliness to the world. And to be able to bring godliness to the world, he has to understand what God is and what's the purpose of how to bring God to the world. And therefore, He'll, he'll, he'll get his whole package. As it's brought in the Zoya, the Pasha's boy in the portion of boy, begin this time, in order that they may know him, and so forth. So, however, here's explanation. He just says, thus, the special quality and purpose of contemplation that leads to love itself. Contemplation of God's greatness is, is an exercise is to a much greater degree in the love that is created from contemplation and is found in love, which is merely revealed through, merely revealed through contemplation. In the case of these two aforementioned kinds of love, something that is there on its own, you're just revealing it, something that you're creating in order to merely reveal the love of my soul by contemplating how God is a source of life or the reveal, the true love of like, a, of, of like a son. By contemplating how God is a true father, at one's meditation need to be not excessively profound. A much deeper understanding, a more profound mode of meditation is necessary 
in order to, to create the love of God based solely on intellectual comprehension. As a result, the divine intention, that's the ending of the, the, the today's Tanya, as a result, the divine intention that they may know him, that created beings come to know godliness, is realized to a much greater extent through the, through the contemplation of the, through when one uses out his seichel, one uses out not thus his, his intellect, thus to reveal something that's hidden, but to reveal his true purpose. When I reveal the true purpose of my existence, this is an additional reason as to why this kind of love inherited from the patriarchs is not suffice. I cannot live with an instinct love that I need to reveal. I need to reveal a true love of God through my understanding because that's why I'm here. If it was thus based on the instinct of, so, what, so then I am, what do I need me for? Everybody has the same thing. It's instinct love. So what am I doing here? It's given to me by somebody else. The, the patriarchs gave me this love. The Abish gave me this instinct love. So what, do I, what does that have to do with me? It has to do with the patriarchs. It has to do with God. So what do I come to the world for? I came to the world to reveal the patriarchs' love. That's what I came to the world for, for somebody else. I came to the world for Zalman Bukit. Where's my love? And that's my love is through my contemplation, my own brain, not the brain of somebody else, not the brains of, 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 of uh, what somebody else gave me, my own brain. And now through my own seichel, I create my love. Not somebody else's love, my, not my inherited love, but my own. And that's why I came to the world. I didn't come to the world only for somebody else's love. I didn't come to the world only because I am the son uh, a grandchild of Avraham Avinu. I came to real for my own purpose. And how do I know? And how do I reveal that purpose? That why I came to the world, my own personal purpose in this world is when I create understanding in who I am and my godly purpose. And each person to his own, I doubt that is each person to his own situation. I'm not going to be Avraham Avinu. I'm not going to be Moshe Rabbeinu. Even though as we learned in the Chassidus, that we all have something inherited by Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And we all have something inherited from Moses, but I'm not going to be them. I'm going to be who I am going to be. And therefore, the more I have contemplation in the love of God, in, in God, which creates my true love, that's real. That is something that I have created, not something that was given to me or something that's hidden within me, but something that belongs to me. And that's the greatness. And that's really the purpose. Because the Abish they brought us down to the world, not to be somebody else, not to do somebody else's service, but to do our own service. And that's why we all should have meditation and contemplation, understand Godness, to create our own Avas Hashem. Each person, according to the way he understands things, each person will have a different love of God. And that's why he came to the world. And that's why we are all different and we are all needed. This is an additional reason and why love and heritage of the patriarch is not suffice and is necessary to exert oneself to attain love of God that stems entirely from his own contemplation of the greatness of God. And that completes the Tanya of today. Today is the, is the second day of the month, Bay's year. Birthday the Reb Marash. We have a call coin Lachatil Ariba day of uh, to begin with go over. Very special day in the Hebrew calendar. And the Tilim of today is from chapter 10 to chapter 17. If you say those seven chapters, you have done the chitas of the day. I wish you all a wonderful and beautiful day. A happy day, a day of Lachatil Ariba to begin with over. We may, may we, there was a famous statement of the Reb Marash, the fifth Lubavitch Rebbe. The world says, if you can't go under, you go over. I say, but to begin with, let's go over. So let us all, to begin with, not have to work with going over, but let's just go over, let's begin with, just jump over. Wish you all a beautiful, happy, and healthy, wonderful day.